we're standing out here in front of Lisa's 108 guitars, we talk about the zeitgeist of guitars. Now, your first guitar, what was it? A Gibson SG copy. Well, first electric was. First electric. Yeah, first electric was a Gibson SG copy. How old were you? Uh, 15. What was the first songs or riffs you learned to play on that guitar? I believe it was Taking Care of Business <laughs> by Bachman Turner Overdrive. Randy Bachman. Yes. There's some good riffs there. It is a good riff. Yeah. We get up every morning. Alarm clock, clock morning. Clock morning. Take the A15 into, into the, the city. city. Yeah. Taking care of business. That's what we're doing now, see? That's what it we're all doing. ties in. It all ties in. And as you, your career evolved and your chops evolved, what did you start to play? What kind of guitar? I got a Ibanez Destroyer after I saw Eddie Van Halen at the uh, Golden West Ballroom in Norwalk, California. Accidentally, actually, I was going there to see UFO. And I was, it was, uh, I was 15 at that time. And I um, switched over and got an, a Diamond as Destroyer. <laughs> it inspired you to take a new path. Yes, it was before he played the strats for the whammy bars and the whole deal. Right. So. Okay. And then when you went, let's say when I met you in 87 with House of Lords, what were you playing then? I was playing a copy of that that BC Rich made me with uh, the Here's Johnny uh, picture on there from uh, The Shining, Jack right. Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. You still have that guitar? I don't. Do you, are you like, you know, Steve Vai was telling me this morning that a lot of his guitars just kind of disappeared because they weren't meant to stay with him. Yeah. He has that surrender sort of play. Yeah. Place. He doesn't hold on to them like they're so sacred. But a lot of the other guys are like very emotionally attached to their guitars. Are you emotionally attached to any of your guitars? No. 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 It's a thing. Yeah. I mean, more of the symbolism. I have. I was actually pondering the idea of not playing the electric anymore. Just the acoustic, because it more yeah. represents how you are, a little quieter. Yeah, but uh, I just, you know, life's an experiment. You toy with different ideas. Don't get stuck on any one of them, and right. just keep floating. And and uh, I said, you know what? If I can find a Les Paul with B90s and a Bigsby, and I can find a Fender Deville amp. Then uh, I will I will take up this particular phenomena again. And lo and behold, my buddy called and he says, "You're not going to believe this. There's a woman, a friend of my girlfriend's, that has this Les Paul guitar and a Fender Deville amp, and th she actually lives in the mobile home that I grew up in in Cypress, California." That's what we would call a synchronicity. synchronicity. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about Mr. Carl Jung as uh, that was happening. That was. Definitely in that category. Yeah, and it is a, and I named the guitar now after uh, one of the little off gun girls that has inspired me uh, with the project that I'm doing now, Miraculous Love Kids. Uh, her name is Parwana, which means butterfly. So the guitar is named Parwana in honor of her. Her. Because she symbolizes, you know, the suffering of these uh, girls. Yeah, and girls. And uh, across the planet, but in particular, Afghanistan and Pakistan, where I've been traveling I to. I know you have. Yes. Sorry, I didn't mean to jump you're, ahead, you're but. You're uh... a minstrel of the Middle East. <laughs>